Hello everyone, welcome to Rafferty's Galleries. My name is Rick and we are here on a nice cool autumn day to talk about Halloween decorations, more specifically digital decorations. What you see behind me is what I consider phase one, where we decorate for the Halloween season about two to three weeks before Halloween. Phase two is where we incorporate the digital decorations. This is where we fill the windows with digital zombies, sirens, and other cool phantasms. This house gets lit up the night of trick or treat, and usually some nights before that. What this video is gonna show you is how we put it all together. I'll show you the DVD players I use, the projectors I use, uh, the software I use, and even the material I use. Show you how we plan things out, and then give you some behind the scenes footage of how it all comes together. So let's go have some fun putting some digital ghosts in these windows. Ah! Okay, here we have what I call the arsenal. This is the collection of DVD players and projectors I use to eliminate all seven rooms in our house. Um, just a note that everything you see here has been bought used off of auction sites or local garage sales. You don't need to go out and buy high-end expensive new equipment to do this. Almost everything you see here is 10 years or older at a very cheap price. And most of them have some kind of damage, either broken legs or high bulb life which isn't really a factor because I'm only using them a couple hours out of the year. A couple notes in regards to DVD players. Um, I would recommend that you get either ones with a remote control or ones that have the menu search on them. These have the most flexibility when flipping through the multiple settings on the DVD software. You can use some older, older DVD players that may only play a single track over and over, but they won't give you the flexibility to flip through the menus on the DVD. In regards to the projectors, I recommend at least 3,000 lumens. That's a nice bright light to give you some nice contrast in the windows. Another thing to notice too, all this is standard definition, 480. None of this equipment is HD. Our house sits back a little distance from the street, so it ain't really going to make a difference. The images still project quite well. However, if your window is close to the public, maybe an HD projector might be a good investment. Another thing you'll see here, too, is what they call a short throw projector. I use this where I have a short space and I have to fill a large window. You'll see that up in one of the bedrooms. And then we also have a couple sets of computer speakers, which I use to project the sound out the windows. All right, here are the two DVDs I primarily use in our display. One is Ghostly Apparitions, the second is Phantasms. What you'll see in the majority of my windows will be the sirens in their different formats they come in. And then I'll have the Reaper somewhere, and then I'll put the Beckoning Beauty in the smallest window that we have. I also have the zombie file, which I purchased individually, so that will show up somewhere in the display also. All right, here we have what I call the game plan. This is where I determine which videos go where. One thing to keep in mind is that most of the videos are made on a central orientation, which means if you have a frame most of the activity takes place in the middle. However, they do have some formats where the activity takes place throughout the whole frame. Keep this in mind when considering window types. For instance, where I have a double window, you don't want to choose a video where most of the action is in the middle. You want to select one that has activity throughout the whole frame. Here's what I do. For example, in the garage, I have one big garage with two single windows. I can either do one projector per window or one projector to fill up the whole window. What I prefer to do is one projector in the middle that will project the image between these two windows. So in a sense, I will have like a fishbowl effect and this is where I will put in 
the sirens. Same thing here at the dining room. I'll put one projector here that projects an image between the two windows. For the triple that is in our den, I will put a projector right here that projects the whole image and I will select a video format that has both sirens back and forth and then also a central feature. It's a nice big window for that to occur. Also in here, I can take speakers outside that project the sound to the oncoming visitors. All right, in relation to the second floor, I'm gonna start with our bathroom. This is actually the simplest one in the whole house. It's one simple window. I place a projector here. Basically goes straight at that window. This is where I'll use the ghostly apparition that floats back and forth. She actually fits perfect in that window. Um, second, one bedroom that has two single windows. Again, um, with the size of the room, I need to place a projector here that actually pans out to hit both of these. Again, I will go with the sirens that go back and forth, sort of like swimming in an aquarium. This little nook is a big issue. Because of the tight space and large window, I need to use what they call a short throw projector. That I only have six feet to throw, and it's quite a large window. So in this one, because we talked about this central option or zigzaggy option, here I will choose to use either the zombies or the reaper because they fill up the window completely. Similarly, in our office, I will place a projector here that gets this double window up here. Again, because it's a double window, we don't want anything in the middle, so I'll either do the zombies here or the reaper. So let's go in each room and see what happens. All right, here we are at the alcove of the bedroom. I just want to use this window to show you how I typically prep the other windows in the house for digital decorations. We have horizontal blinds, which are great during the day. They can control daylight and privacy. However, they will obstruct digital decorations. You have two choices, either completely remove them or keep them and raise them. There's pros and cons to each. If you keep them, you maintain the control of daylight and privacy throughout the day. However, if you raise them, you're going to sacrifice a portion of your window depending on how deep your blind is. If you completely remove the blind system, you're going to gain maximum area of window glass, but you're going to lose the control of daylight throughout the day. So it's a matter of preference. All right, the window blinds are set. Next step is to get your shower curtain and a bunch of push pins. This is just a basic shower curtain, nothing fancy. Take a bunch of push pins and put them into the casing. I would recommend that you put them into the top so you don't see the pinholes. And that's it. You're all set for the projections. Now, if you get a little claustrophobic, not being able to see out during the day, just take a couple extra pins and tack them up. Just like that. It's nothing pretty, but it's only for a couple of days out of the year. It sure beats taking it down and repinning them every time you want to light the decorations. So when nighttime comes around, put the blinds up, drop the curtain, so to speak, and ready to go. Here's the bathroom at daytime with the single window. And then over here we have the projector and DVD player set up on the TV tray. Okay, here we are in the bathroom. For this one, we're gonna go with the window and the beckoning beauty. Horizontal scene. Over to the beckoning beauty. For a roaming phantom. A 
she is, fitting perfectly in the window. Here we are in the large bedroom at daytime, two single windows, and I have the projector and DVD player actually set back in the hallway, so I needed to get back far enough to project the image across the entire wall. Then as we move in, this is the alcove. Because this space is so tight, I needed to use what they call a short throat projector, which has the large lens which is designed to project a very large image over a short distance. There's the DVD player. And here, we actually have an advantage to use external sound with the remote speaker. This will be put outside the window on the windowsill while the display is running. Okay, here we are coming into the large bedroom with two windows. There we have the sirens going back and forth and the respective projector in the hallway. And over here, we have the zombies. Now this is the speaker that will be put outside to project the sound outward. And there's the short throw projector. Here we have the office in daytime. And coming on back, you can see the projector and DVD player set up on crates. Here we are in the office. The rising rates. And then the projector. Here's the large window in the den, already covered in the shower curtains. I actually had to splice two together to cover the area. Here are the computer speakers. These will be put outside on the front porch, wiring through the bottom window. And then they come back to the projector and DVD player on a tray table. Here we have the den at night. Here's the dining room with two tall slender windows, the DVD player, and the projector up on a music stand so I can get the images up over the dining room table. Here's the dining room at night. There's the DVD player, and there's the projector on the music stand. Here's the garage at daytime. Two tall slender windows. And here is the projector and DVD player actually set back far enough to project the image across the entire wall. And here's the garage. And this is what it looks like when everything comes together.